Hi, I'm Amanda Dolan. Welcome back to the Mental Society. Uh, this episode is going to be the first of three episodes about suicide. Um, suicide is something that is uh, really close to me, and I think that it's an important thing to talk about. So this first episode, we're going to take a closer look at suicide in the United States, uh, some of the numbers, and uh, then I'm going to get into a little bit of my personal thoughts about why rates of suicide have increased over the last 20 years. Um, and then in the second episode, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my personal story with suicide and how um, I've experienced suicide in general, including um, how others' suicides have impacted myself and my community. Um, and then in the last episode, I'm really excited to share um, how these two high school students are using computers to help uh, impact their own community and the entire United States um, and making sure that individuals uh, receive the care and support that they need. So, you know, I love numbers, so I'm super excited about sharing this with you. I think numbers tell a story and I love stories. Um, so I'm gonna just, you know, jump in. This might be boring and I'm gonna do my very best to not make it that way. Talk a little bit um, about some of the other things going on uh, behind the numbers that, that I've seen and uh, that, that I think you might have seen as well. Um, there's also going to be some resources linked in the show notes um, that you can look at uh, and dig through and, and learn even more if that's something that you're interested in. So I'm just going to you know jump right in here with um, this first statistic that's pretty heart-wrenching to me, which is that overall in the United States, suicide is the 12th leading cause of death, just period. So, um, you know, things like accidents and cancer and heart disease and diabetes, I think, you know, those sorts of things um, are above it, but um, it's still the 12th leading cause of death. Um, but the number that, that breaks my heart even more, and it's really telling to me about how suicide um is impacting our world is that suicide is the second leading cause of death for people age 10, 10 to 34. Um, and that's only behind accidental death. So y'all like y'all what that means is is literally in the United States, more people age 10 to 34 die of suicide than by cancer, heart disease, diabetes, flu, pneumonia, and COVID combined. And those numbers were from the year of 2020. So that's a lot. That's a lot of young people dying from something that, that can be treated. And, and while suicide may be a manner of death, I don't, you know, I want to make it clear that the, while suicide is, you know, how someone dies, often the mental illness is really the cause of death. And so I think that that's kind of what we need to focus on sometimes, because I've, I've looked at, you know, death certificates and things like that, where, you know, the manner of death is suicide and the cause of death is, you know, um, an overdose or something like that. And the reality is, is that I think the actual cause of death is depression or bipolar or, you know, PTSD. Like there's, there are other, there's a disease, not just the actual act. And I wish that we would focus more on, on that and that truly like suicide is um, an effect, the, you know, the result uh, in most cases of a serious mental illness. Um, 
And so like, you know, yeah, younger people, the number is really high. Now, if we look at people who are older, you know, we look at the other end um, that, you know, individuals over the age of 65, while suicide's not um, in the top 10 or even, you know, it's just, it's not up there, you know, at the, the same levels as with those younger people, it is, um, they do account for one fifth, 20% of all suicides in the United States. And, and I, you know, that number, you know, where it is on the list of, you know, the order of, of how many deaths there are by different causes, um, it makes sense that it's lower because more people are dying of heart disease or, um, you know, a stroke or cancer. So all of that, you know, it does make, make a lot of sense. Um, but, but here's the thing is that while they make up 20% of all suicides, they're only 12% of the population. So that does mean that that number is skewed, like that they are more likely to uh, commit suicide than their younger counterparts. I'm going to get into a little bit more of that. Um, so the other thing is like that the people that are older, that older generation, they are far more likely to die from suicide attempts than their um, younger counterparts. Uh, about a quarter of suicide attempts in people over the age of 25 I mean, I'm sorry, over the age of 65. So one quarter over the age of 65, um, they complete suicide and die. Whereas in those younger populations and overall, it's one in 200. So it's a really significant difference. Um, and there's some ideas and theories and, and all of that. You know, one thing that is true, they, they plan um, how they're going to uh, kill themselves in a much more, um, well, they, they do a lot more planning. I don't know it's much more anything way. They, they do more planning. They, uh, they know, you know, how they want to, to end things and they have it all set. Um, and it's, it's really sad that, that that's, that that's, the, that's true. The other piece to, um, those suicide attempts that, um, you know, where the person has not died because they're older and often have other underlying health issues, um, they don't recover as well. Um, and they may never fully recover, which, you know, leads to some of the, uh, the things that maybe got them to that place of feeling completely helpless and hopeless and as if, you know, suicide and dying was their only choice. Um, so, you know, I've said a little bit about how many people have actually died. Um, some other numbers, though, that are pretty staggering is that 12, just over 12 million adults in the United States um, over the age you know, that's age 18 or over, reported having serious thoughts of suicide. And then 1.2 million adults attempted suicide in this last year. Um, that's a lot of people. And, and while I, I want to um, focus on what, you know, that means, that, that many people are in so much pain and feeling so helpless that they would rather die than continue to face whatever is going on for them. Um, and that is devastating that people are feeling that way. Here's the thing is like, is money talks. And, and when you think about the cost of those suicide attempts on you know, the e like EMS services and other resources that, you know, are provided in the community, um, that makes it a financial um, 
issue as well as a life and death and human issue. And as much as I, I hate to say this, money talks. And so I think that if we start focusing on how much money we can save by making sure that people are well um, and receive treatment and receive the help that they need and that it's affordable and attainable. Um, you know, previously I talked about the costs of, of mental health care and how underserved we are as an entire country. Um, it makes sense in some ways that, that the numbers of people struggling are so high. And also it just feels so like we have a way to help correct this by putting some money into our communities and ensuring that um, care is available for everyone, even people that are in rural, rural areas or people that don't have insurance or people that, you know, just don't have even access to the funds to make the co-payments or meet their deductible. Um, because for so many people, I think mental illness doesn't feel like it deserves the same treatment as physical illness. Like if you had a broken leg, you're going to go to the hospital and have it set. But if you're feeling really depressed, you may think to yourself, I just need to like shake it off and I can, I can get out of this myself. And when care is expensive and difficult to get, it's really, really easy to um, not get that care and not put yourself first. Um, so, you know, talked a little bit about old versus young um, when it comes to attempts and uh, suicide deaths. Um, but another thing that I think is just an interesting thing to point out um, is that men are nearly um, four times more likely to die by suicide. Um, and But women attempt suicide about one and a half times more than men. And then men over the age of 65 have the highest overall rate of suicide. Um, so men in general, actually like the rates of suicide with them are higher. Um, and, and I'll get into some of my, my thoughts on all of that, um, in a little bit. So we've talked about age, gender as well. There is a pretty significant gender gap between, um, rates of suicide and men versus women, but then also ethnicity, uh, plays a really big role in that. Um, and um, indigenous people here in the United States um, are about 30% more likely to commit suicide than their white peers. Um, and that number is really difficult for me. Um, and in addition to that, individuals that are um, that identify with two or more races are also at significantly higher risk. Um, so, you know, I don't have all the answers as to why. I know that, you know, on reservations, there is even less care available um, often. And um, the care that is available to them is often very far away and difficult to get to. Um, and so again, this goes back to the need for more care, not just, um, and more providers, uh, and not just education and awareness. Um, so the last kind of little piece that I'm going to talk about, um, when it comes to statistics for, well, so LGBT youth, um, are, more than four times likely to attempt suicide than their peers. Um, and according to the Trevor Project, uh, that means that about every 45 seconds, um, an LGBTQ youth is attempting suicide. That number is a lot. That's, that's a 
it's, I'm speechless when I think about some of these numbers because this is really impacting our young people. Um, and therefore it's impacting, you know, people like myself as a mom of two teenagers and whose friends have kids. Um, and, and what, you know, it is when, when I see or hear that, um, someone that I know or someone that my kids know has attempted suicide, um, or has been, um, successful and I really hate that word but successful at their attempt and they've died um so you know it's before I get any more in, into anything um one of the things that I found in my research is I think it's just, it's not quite twice as many but it's almost twice as many suicides as homicides um like by death. So there's almost twice as many suicides, um, people dying by suicide than they are by homicide. And yet like we have whole, you know, we have homicide detectives and yeah, I get that, you know, people that commit murder might hurt someone else and that people need to be held accountable for their crimes. And yet again, it's this place of we're putting money somewhere that I think is important. And I am not saying take money away from that thing. But what I am saying is that if we're putting that much money into people who um, are dying at the hands of others, why aren't we putting money, um, you know, resources, energy, all of that into people that are dying by their own hand um, and dying really because of, um, a disease that's not being treated. And uh, so it's it's just one of those other numbers that is, it's interesting to just note that, that there's, a, that's where we are when it comes to the number of suicides. And think about how often you hear about someone, um, or you hear about every murder that happens in your community. It, it's, you know, it's on the news, it's on um, websites and Facebook and people talk about it. And um, yet we don't talk about, or don't often talk about when people have committed suicide and that, um, you know, that's not put in the paper. And I'm not saying it should be at all. It's because it, it is a very private Thing. It's it's a medical issue, and it's, not everyone deserves to know, but it is something that we keep hidden. Um, we don't really talk about, and because of that, I don't think people realize how prevalent it really is. Um. So, you know, the, something that you know when I was doing my research, I came across was that, um from 2000 to uh, this year, suicide rates have gone up by a little over 30%, um, from about 10 per 100,000 people in the United States to 14 per 100,000 people in the United States. Those are rough numbers. Um, and I, you know, I get like some people might hear, oh, but like, that's not really very many people. Um, and perhaps it's not, but if that person, if that, if, you know, if one of those 14 out of a hundred thousand is somebody that matters to you or your community or someone that matters, you know, that person matters to someone that matters to you, it's going to, it's going to impact you. And I think that we forget really how small, you know, this, our world is, that we are all so connected. And, and that means that suicide is impacting each of us every day. Um, and so like those, like all of these numbers that I've just talked about, that it's the second leading cause of death among young people and that, um, you know, 
the number is going up and that, uh, you know, so many people who are, you know, that, that elderly people are committing suicide at higher rates than their, um, than younger people here in the United States. Like it's, it's heartbreaking. And I have, you know, I want to share some of my, my thoughts about, you know, what is clearly a health crisis. Um, and I think that, that in addition to having resources available, um, affordable and adequate care, uh, that, that there's a couple things, you know, that are impacting this and then some things that we can do. So one of the things that I, you know, found interesting was that you just throw some basic numbers out there and, and see if you you know, get what I'm I'm getting at, and then I'll dig in a little more. Um, so 2000, uh, the the rate of suicide was 10.4 per 100,000. And so just whenever I say a, a rate at this point, just know it's out of 100,000 people. Um, then in 2003, MySpace came out, and that number was then 10.8. Then in 2006, Facebook was made public. You know, for a while it was just for students. Um, and Twitter came out. Uh, and that moved that number up to 11. iPhone, the first iPhone was released in 2007. And the rates of suicide went to 11.1. And then in 2010, uh, Instagram came out and that number went up to 12.1. So, um, you know, the rate hit its highest at, in 2018 at 14.2. It's dropped a little bit, but it's gone back up. Um, so, so here you go. Here are some, you know, I think it's made pretty clear that when I, just gave you those numbers that think that there's something about technology and social media um, impacting rates of suicide. I think that um, we are more connected and I love that. I love connection. I love that we can use social media to um, meet people on the other side of the world. I actually made some really, really great friends through Facebook. Um, I, I went to a friend's wedding in Italy who I met on Facebook. Um, and, and so I don't have anything against social media. I think that it's great. I use it all the time. But what I do think, you know, a few things I think about what social media has done is, um, and technology too, is one, um, comparison. We may feel already not so great. And then we look at social media and all of a sudden we're seeing like, oh, well the Smiths over there have everything and the Joneses over there have everything. And this kid that's in my class, they're getting to go on this great trip and I don't. Um, and while that's not, you know, what why people kill themselves is because they don't have that. They start to maybe think things like, oh, that classmate is so pretty and she's so thin and she's so, um, you know, has it all. And and I'm never going to be like that and I'm never going to be good enough. Another thing that that I noticed when working with young people um, was that they would really kind of live and die. Um, I don't like that I said that, but they would really like focus on um, how many likes they got on an Instagram post or how many comments. Um, how quickly someone uh, responded to their Snapchat. Uh, and, you know, when we are waiting for that external validation all the time, um, it's harder to really focus on our ourselves. Um, and, and we crave other people's, um, uh, you know, attention and, and telling us that we are worthy of all the things. Um, and then also, you know, with technology, 
um, you know, came email and then text messaging and Snapchat and um, all of, I know there's even more WhatsApp and, and other things out there that mean that you are connected to people all the time. And sometimes those connections are, um, or can be anonymous, you know, like you can create a, a Google phone number or, um, you know, even, you know, fake Snapchat or uh, Instagram or, or any of those and, or email, right. And, and be able to contact people anonymously. And, and also, especially, you know, we all carry our phones with us everywhere we go. We're always on them. And, uh, and so we carry in our pocket a way to stay connected, which again, it can be a great thing. But if you're being bullied, um, can't get away. You know, when I was growing up, when you left school, you left school. And there was no real way for people to get in touch with you unless they knew exactly where you were or you answered your phone at home. Um, now someone might leave a, you know, a message on your answering machine, but your parents might get it first. Um, and so it was just, it was different. Uh, you weren't always accessible. Um, and you know, it was, it was harder to hide the bullying and the belittling and, and all of those things. And that can be really, really difficult um, when you're constantly being told that you are not good enough in whatever way that is, um, that you don't fit in, that, I mean, you're you're fat, you're too skinny, you're not pretty enough, your hair is the wrong color. Um, and bullying and hearing those messages over and over again can really, you know, impact you. And then, you know, on top of that, how many times have we heard or seen that, you know, someone tells someone online, oh, just go kill yourself. Or, you know, the world would be better off if you're dead. Go jump off a bridge. Um, so you're already feeling really terrible. You're struggling with your mental health. And then you hear from someone, the world's better off without you and she go just die. Well, yeah, like it makes sense to me. Um, and this is like where my, you know, like the mama in me comes out. I just want to be like, everybody be kind and love each other. Um, and, you know, if anyone that knows me in real life knows that I always talk about, like, you are loved. I love you, period, because you are a person. Um, but that's not the way the world works as much as I want it to be. Um, I think people can be very cruel. On the other side, I do think that there are really amazing, kind, beautiful humans out there. Um, but sometimes that negativity it's really drowned out by all of that positive. Um, and then also what's come with that technology, in addition to not being away, uh, able to get away from bullies or negative comments and, and people's um, opinions of us, if you will, is that, you know, 24 hour news cycle, you know, it's, you hear about everything. You open Facebook and there's a story about a, you know, a deadly shooting on the other side of the world or, um, you know, the school shooting that happened in another state or an election that's, you know, happening in another country or that earthquake that happened, you know, on the other side of the Pacific. There's, you're always hearing something that's going on um, in the world. And again, that can be really great that we are connected and we know what's happening. And also it can be really overwhelming to constantly be inundated with all of those things that can be stressful and can 
feel really heavy and it, it, it can be a lot. And, and even for me, you know, when I hear about a school shooting in particular, because I have kids that are in schools and it, it makes me ugh, about having my children in a place that I should feel safe to send them to. And sometimes I don't, um, but it impacts me. It, it affects my, my mental well being. Um, and you know, these last few elections, I think have been really difficult for a lot of us, no matter which side you're on, there's just so much name calling and fighting and it's, you know, my way or the highway. And I can't be friends with you if you don't think exactly how I do. It, it starts to isolate us even though we're connected and it we don't feel good when we're hearing all of those things. And so, you know, you already don't feel good. You don't feel like you are ever going to get well. And then all you see around you is this kind of doom and gloom. Um, man, it, it like, it doesn't surprise me that people say this is too much for me. Um, and I don't, and I don't know, I don't have like a great answer how to fix that. Um, except you know, on social media, be kind, period. Just, just be kind. Um, like, like many of our mothers said, or our teachers said growing up, um, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. It costs you nothing to keep scrolling and not comment. Um, and if you comment and you say something that is really mean or hateful, that says a lot about you and who you are as a person. Um, if you're not there to help, why why are you commenting? Why are you saying something mean? Like, is it just because you can? Because that seems like a silly reason to be harmful towards someone. Um, so really, I think like technology, again, I love it because it connects us. And I've told you, I've, I've met, really amazing people through social media. Um, and I can't imagine not having those people in my life. And also that connection and that ability to be anonymous um, and that we're always on um, and always accessible can really impact our mental health and our mental wellness. And then like, you know, if we look at the other, you know, I, I would say that social media tends to impact younger people more just by the, the nature of, I think that people who are younger use Facebook, um, Instagram. I mean, I think, and right, there's like Facebook is for, I don't know, like Gen X and millennials and then, you know, the TikTok and Instagram. I don't know. They're all for different people. Um, I'm old and I love Facebook. Uh, that's where I hang out most of the time. I also like TikTok because it's funny sometimes. Um, but, you know, despite like the social media and the 24 hour news cycle that comes with technology, um, when we're looking at those, the people that are older, the elderly, I think there's a couple of things that really impact that. Um, number one is you know, they're, they can be lonely. Like you can be lonely because you can't get out as much. Um, also your friends and loved ones uh, may have already passed, you know, just because of old age and you feel alone. Um, another big thing that that I've noticed with some people that I care about not even related to suicide, just, you know, what they struggle with as they've gotten older is a loss of independence. You know, when you're being told you can't drive anymore or you need help with cooking or laundry or grocery shopping, um, it's really, it's gotta be really difficult. You know, I don't, I don't know what that's like because I haven't had to deal with that personally. Um, but I know that if someone told me, you know, like you can't leave your house, you can't drive, 
unless somebody is with you or somebody drives you, even if I didn't have anywhere to go, I, I wouldn't like that feeling of being trapped. Um, and then also, you know, as, as we get older, our health tends to decline. So if your health has declined and you're suffering, suicide can feel like a way to end that suffering. So, you know, if you're lonely, if you're grieving the people that you've lost, if you no longer feel like you can care for yourself and you don't feel well, that's a lot of, of weight um, to have on your shoulders. And it can make sense that that it's overwhelming. Um, and then also, and this is kind of where like that whole society piece comes in and, and what we can do is, you know, the financial piece. We've really not um, set a lot of, um, people are not set up for retirement. Um, Social Security is certainly not enough to live comfortably on. Um, and in addition to that, you know, pensions don't exist as much as they used to. Uh, people don't have the ability to save the way that, that they used to. And also, in general, life expectancy is longer. Now people are living longer, so you need more money. Um, which means that you've had to start saving early to continue to have the same lifestyle. And, you know, then you have more expenses, like your healthcare has gone up, um, healthcare expenses have gone up. And, you know, especially like right now, you know, we're seeing increase in housing prices and food costs and gas. And, and so all of those additional costs, you know, start to impact things. And, if you don't have money and you don't feel like you can care for yourself financially and you don't want to be a burden to other people, um, a burden financially or a burden that they need to come and help take care of you um, in whatever way that may be. It's, it's a lot. And I, I can understand how all of those things together can feel very heavy and it can feel helpless and hopeless and it can feel as if um you know suicide is is the option that that makes the most sense um so yeah there that's what i've got some numbers some some thoughts uh, and i don't have any other real answers um Except I think that, you know, we need to be kind and we need to consider um, how our words affect other people, um, that it's okay to take a step back uh, from being online all the time uh, and, and not, you know, say, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to feel overwhelmed right now. I'm, I'm not in a good space for this. Um, and also, I think that, you know, especially as people get older, we need to make sure that um, they are taken care of um, in a way that doesn't feel as though they are a burden to others. And also that, you know, our retired people, our retired individuals and, and those that are elderly um, are financially secure um, and able to not have to choose between food or medicine or, um, you know, paying for the, for electricity or food or, you know, whatever that is. Um, so you know, that's where like, you know, you as, as our listeners can start to think about, well, how, how can I, um, how can I make a difference? What lawmakers can I talk to um, who out there might know someone that can help me get connected to the right people? It's like I said, we're really connected. Uh, so think about how you can start to you know, impact change where it really comes to uh, what what's available treatment wise and what services are available in your communities for um, all of these groups that we've talked about, um, whether it's those young people that are still in school, what can we provide them in that environment, um, all the way to uh, elderly people um, and, you know, with 
especially with LGBTQ youth, but but that um, that population in general, there's so much about just being supportive and loving and you know removing any judgment that you might have um, because you know I don't want to get on a high horse here, but but what the research shows is that the, the rates of suicide are higher there because people don't feel accepted and, and they don't feel like they can be themselves. And so let's just affirm who everyone is and uh, and love them exactly as they are in this world. Um, all right, there, those are my the numbers and my thoughts. Um, and um, so now I'm gonna share our mental morsel, which today um, is the, um, 988 suicide crisis lifeline. Um, that used to be a much longer 1-800 number. Now um, in every state, you can just dial 988 and you can be connected to a local crisis center that provides uh, free and confidential emotional support that are feeling um, suicidal, that are in a suicidal crisis or you know emotional distress. People answer that number 24 hours a day and seven days a week, always available. Um, and they're really committed to um, helping with suicide prevention um, and empowering individuals to get the care that they need and making sure that people know where to find that care. In addition to building awareness around this epidemic of suicide um, in the United States. So um, you can find um the the suicide crisis lifeline at 988lifeline.org um or if you need and, and you can get information at that website you can also um connect with someone through your computer through um, a messaging system there um or you can call or text 988 from your phone um and get connected to someone that way uh, someone that wants to help you because you matter and the world is better with you here. And with that, we have reached the end of today's episode. Thank you for listening and learning more about mental health and society meet. Now go out and open a conversation. Discover the ways mental health is being experienced in your world. You can find more um, of the Mental Society podcast um, at thementalsociety.com and you can listen to more episodes anywhere that you get your favorite podcasts. And remember that you are not alone in your struggles. Hope and help are all around you. Until next time, this is Amanda Dolan wishing you good health, mental and otherwise.